Good afternoon, I am Julia Davis of Finchley Yoga and Yoga Teachers Forum and I am here today with Rhonda Brito and we thought that we would have a chat today about embodied non-violent communication. Welcome Ron. Thank you Julia, what a lovely introduction. <laughs> <laughs> so Ron and I started chatting about non-violent communication quite a while ago and we always had in our heads that it would be a really nice idea to get together and run a workshop looking at it and we envisaged it taking place in the lovely wide open sunshiny Finchley Yoga studio um, but now we think that it is a really pertinent time with some people living on their own some people living at very very close quarters to each other um, how we can look at our relationships with each other and deal with the challenges that come up either they might even be coming up in video calls and then we kind of put a call down and we're on our own in our own home or it might be in very close quarters with other people um, so first of all I'd like to ask you Ron where did you first come across nonviolent communication well, um, I came across nonviolent communication about eight or nine years ago. And um, so I went to a, a, day, a workshop, I read the book, and I basically started going to camps. <laughs> now, ca I know, please laugh, because camping was not something I had ever done. So it wasn't just nonviolent communication, it was nonviolent communication camping. And I was like, okay, I'll just go for a couple of days and then leave, you know. And um, it turned out to be life changing. I found a wonderful group of people who were really all wanting to learn. It wasn't so much about people teaching, there were workshops available, there was free space available. But I started to learn about my own emotions. That was the huge thing. I probably wouldn't have said it at the time. Um, but really looking back, it was a real line in the sand where I started to consider what my own emotions were about and how to put language to them. Mm. And it really struck me. Mm. The contrast between compassionate language and the language we normally use. Mm. And so we don't realize that a lot of what we say could hurt people's feelings because that's the way we've spoken for lots of generations. Mm. So what is nonviolent communication? Well, it's a way of connecting to oneself and other people. Um, so that everybody's needs get, get met. So it's a way of both expressing yourself listening to others in an empathic way and i'm saying this and i think what does that really look like you know mm -hmm. so to connect with another person is a key thing because that's the sort of thing where your heart sort of glows and you think oh god they get me or mm -hmm. i get them oh that's beautiful that's the sort of thing we really enjoy. And a lot of times when that's not happening, well, what our emotions are doing? Oh, this is boring. This is irritating. I'm fed up. Oh, shut up. Stop saying that. Go away. You know, there are so much that comes up. And we're not really sure and we're never really taught how to deal with those things in a compassionate way. So we say things, oh, be quiet, or stop that, or, you know, just stop bothering me, and all that sort of thing. Mm. And when the other person hears that, you know, it's a bit rough, isn't it? Mm. And so in our real lives, we're playing all these roles where you're, you're yourself, and mm. also you're listening to other people. So you're expressing yourself in a way that could be kinder. And then you feel really may be tense or sad or hurt when someone expresses themselves to you in a way that you wish was kinder. Mm. 
So, and really talking to you here and remembering the kinds of things that come up in our lives all the time, and you're describing people who are in a lockdown situation where they haven't got enough space, and space is a big human need. Space to think, space to just do your own stuff, space to be quiet, space to not be interrupted. It's really hard to not have enough space. Mm. And I think your sense that people around the country are coping with these sorts of circumstances where everything's very immediate. I want this. No, I want that. Um, can I, can I, can I use this? I'm using it, you know? Yeah. How do we sort those things out in a way that, in which our hearts feel softer? Mm. Yeah. Because we're so used to thinking things out. Logically, we can't do things at the same time. I want it or you want it. And that's, you know, it's mutually exclusive. Mm. But to, to communicate with compassion means we can say something different. Something yeah. different could be, well, I'd really like to use that, but actually I could use it in an hour's time. Does that work for you? Do you need it now? Or could you do it later? Mm. Then you can have a different kind of conversation. Yeah. 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 There's, it's, it's interesting what, you, what you're saying, because um, when you're talking about, having language you know the way that you use language and the way that you share language with other people there's a disconnect between how we might wish to connect with other people and what might come out of our mouths in the moment mm -hmm. so there's the the bathroom door's closed bang 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 <laughs> i need them and then there's the, yeah if i could rewind mm -hmm. um, I might speak this way. Could you talk to that a little bit, to, to that kind of, to that difference? How, how to, oh, so I will say that it's really hard because as you say, we're so used to saying things in that other way. But let me in, let me in, hurry up. It's, uh, you know, and it's, it's natural. And if it doesn't work, we just do it louder. Mm. So these these are patterns that we've learned. But one thing that I love is we weren't born that way, so we can unlearn those things. Mm. But it does take time. And like everything that we've ever learned, <laughs> it takes practice. Mm. And so that's why it's lovely to work together in groups and to have buddies where you, you kind of agree we're gonna practice doing this. So can I just ask you? how how do you practice because we're you know we're basically we're talking about trigger points and when we say things that we might not mean at trigger points and then somebody else says something that or they, you might mean it but you mean it in a way that isn't conveyed correctly mm. so how do you create a scenario where you can work with that well what's what's really nice in um in the trainings is we kind of break it down into steps and then we kind of practice scenarios so that we get to learn each of the steps mm. so the main the main components of nonviolent communication are how you can express yourself but from a connection with yourself and not just to control other people and that's a really key thing. You know, trying to get other people to do what we want isn't compassionate. Um, and the other person won't really see it as being compassionate. Um, how to take in what others want in a gentle way, rather than, oh, you're always just trying to annoy me, you know, whatever. Just to go... Oh, you know, when I when I hear you say that, how does it come into you, you know, come into your ears? So it, we need we practice that. What does it sound like when you hear this? And how could you say something that really compassionately says, that's really painful when I hear that because I'm it's sounding like, you know, you 
you know, you want to um, have me do something that you want. And I, that may not be the case, but that's how it feels. Mm. So could you tell me in a, a softer way or a gentle way? And notice the words I'm using, like soft, gentle, heart-centered. Who talks like that? Yeah, yeah. You know, it's huge to go from the ways we normally talk and that we see portrayed on television and film to say, actually, I'd be so much happier if the world was a bit softer. Yeah. And I'd love some gentleness today. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That was, you know... It's, it's really interesting what you're saying as well, because um, I'm in a household with teenagers mm. and I learned in my teen yoga teacher training that teenagers lack empathy. <laughs> it's, a, it's a muscle that they, you know, you're talking about, you know, sort of building a muscle and using it again and again to learn how to do things. That empathy muscle isn't a muscle that they've built. And also when children act in a certain way or teenagers do, it can trigger the child and an adult at the same time. So yes. The adult's acting like acting out at the same time as the teenager's acting out. I'm just wondering whether you've used this form of communication in scenarios that involve that generational challenge. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's a lovely question. And I can imagine it being very different. I have worked as a school teacher in the past. And um, so I'm really familiar with what you're saying. And, um, and then that's much harder because you, you're also up against peer pressure in that they will gang up on you. If, you're, if you go in and say, oh, I'm going to be nice and soft and gentle. Mm. Um, and they're not in that mood. Right. So, Julia... Someone's banging on my front door. <laughs> yes. I'm not hearing my lodger coming down. Right. So I, I really need to, well, there you go. There's a quandary. So I'm going to communicate to you that I've got a bit of a confusing situation going on for me right now. Do you need me to pause the interview so that you can check what's happening at your front door? Thank you very much, Julia. That would be great. I'm just going to rush out. And jump. We were talking about the challenges that we face when we mm. generational. Yeah. Um, yeah. So let's carry on talking. To that. Let's talk about that. Yeah. So it, it is difficult. And I absolutely love your saying that not only when your teenagers are challenging, it triggers your own inner teenager to challenge back. And that can be a, a difficult situation. Um, one, so one thing that the parents could do is practice dealing with something that's challenging by simply pausing and acknowledging, oh, this is challenging. Mm. Uh, you know, actually naming what's going on. Yeah. Oh, you know, when this happens, I'm feeling really, you know, I've got a turmoil going on inside of me. I want to do something, they want to do something else. It's much, there's too much energy going on. And would you, would you do that out loud or would you do that in your head? Would you, would you kind of in your head say, oh my door's slamming. Would, would in your head, would you say that's challenging or would you verbalize it? Would you say out loud, that's challenging? Well, I must say that in my recent years, I have decided to verbalize it. Right. Because it means then the other person knows what's going on for me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. At the beginning, you can't, you can't deal with what's going on for them because you're feeling challenged. Yeah. But by saying it, you're kind of at least communicating. Um, you know, I'm not, I'm not giving the orders. I'm not controlling. I'm just feeling there's too much going on and I'm not sure what I want to say or do. Yeah. And of course, the next most wonderful thing to do with that is to breathe and say, OK, before I can move on with this, this all this energy, I need to just relax my belly and take a few deep breaths. Yeah. So I know that you've taken nonviolent communication, which is a very specific thing where, you know, which has been kind of written out in. Mm -hmm. kind of a formulaic way yeah um, a very useful formulaic yes way. yes uh, 
And then you've kind of looked at it and said, well, what's the missing piece here? Mm. The missing piece for me is me. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I'd like you just to, um, and what we're talking about here is kind of the body and the way that we feel in our, in our bodies mm. when difficult, challenging situations come up. So I'd love you to speak to that and kind of how you have incorporated our bodies into this. And, you know, it's like, how could you not? <laughs> <laughs> oh, exactly. Well, it's true that the, that um, once we've named what's going on by making an observation without any judging, blaming or criticism, the next stage is to acknowledge what feelings are alive in the person. And there are, what's wonderful about that, you know, Marshall Rosenberg, who founded Nonviolent Communication, sort of reminded us that there's a huge array of lots of words to describe feelings mm -hmm. and not just good, bad, okay, not okay. So there's lots of feelings. But also, I have found it, it really helps people to connect with something in their body that helps them to feel the feeling. Yeah. Just yeah. to it's, say it's the really word. It's hard to identify feelings. Yeah. Um, it, it's surprisingly so when someone else, that's why, kind of, how are you? I'm fine. Because it's much easier to say I'm fine. Than, well, yeah. I just fill into it. Mm. Oh, I'm feeling a tightness in my shoulders. What does that mean? You know, that we, yes. we feel things much more mm. easily than we can verbalize. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Oh, that's so true. And so I can say this now. This probably wasn't true for a great many of the eight or nine years that I've been practicing, but it takes time and it's okay. That's another beautiful thing to say, well, actually, I'm learning something new. I feel that I really would love this kind of support in my life. And it'll take a bit of time. And actually, I'm okay to go to groups meet up with different people and try it out and in the meantime my teenagers are still gonna go and <laughs> my partner my neighbors my parents and so everyone's gonna go what's the matter with you you started talking so weirdly you know yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and um and it does it does take that it does take some time yeah um so one of the things I do, you know, working with a group longitudinally at the moment, working with a group on um, on a compassion course that comes from a New York MVC trainer. That's been absolutely amazing to witness people learning lots of different steps week by week, trying them out and each week bringing their personal circumstances and saying, oh, you know, this happened. Mm. This is what I've tried, but I'm feeling, you know. Sometimes those people are feeling really hurt, sad, distraught, and they need some support and empathy. Mm. And so another quality of, of uh, nonviolent communication is you're not trying to fix people. Yeah. You're trying to say, I hear you. Yeah. That sounds really tough. Yeah. And people, when they've been heard, are more likely to feel the power of changing themselves rather than just doing something different because you're trying to help. Oh my goodness, I tell, yeah. I mean, that's, that's the power of listening partnerships is mm. just learning to, to hear. I wanted to ask you as well, um, there may be people who feel drawn to learning about this. Mm. But they might be thinking in their heads, well, I'd like to learn this, but there's no way my wife, partner, girlfriend, daughter, mother will. So what's the point? And I just wanted you to talk to that. Mm -hmm. Well, um, yes, Marshall had a lovely way of talking about this. And it certainly means that it's great if both of you are doing it, but it still works if only one of you is doing it. So we're looking at things like understanding, understanding feelings and your body feeling a bit tense and tight. And so some of the things we learn in embodiment, which is another um, part of my work is to you know open the things that are coming intensely how can we 
explore what it's like if we open them and do does it actually feel any different mm. okay so oh. <laughs> that's that's a powerful thing isn't it yeah. to actually take it in the heat of the moment and say oh you know my belly has got really tense yeah. and to say okay so if i relax that how is it now yeah you know have i got a bit more space yeah yeah so all the time everything that we do we're trying to get needs met yeah and and all those things that we say that are not very gentle or compassionate or kind yeah. are we're trying to meet some sort of need yeah. but we're expressing it in a way that's really tragic but we're trying to meet something that that we really need yeah, i just love it as, as you're telling me about i know <laughs> I see my daughter taking the dog out. My husband walked past in his shorts. Where's the stuff? Oh, it's on the side in there. Um, and this is something that would never be happening if I was if I was talking to you and we weren't in lockdown. I yes. would be here. I would have chosen a time when no one was going to be around. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> but I kind of I you know I've always conducted these interviews, these chats with people from my kitchen. Mm. Kind of, I think. We're real people. We live in the real world. I've got a bin there. I've got a messy kitchen. I've got the dog. <laughs> I think you can see the wedding boots there. But we're living in the world. Mm. And especially with, the, with what you're going to be sharing with us, mm. it, that's, what we, you know, that's what we have to deal with all the time is, is you know, the, the people walking in and out, the, mm. the things interrupting our lives. Yeah. And it's lovely to know that there is a, t a tool of compassion, a tool of being heart led. And I think sometimes we just need to be brave enough to, you know, my children think I'm bonkers. I think I'm kooky, you know, and it doesn't, it doesn't matter. Mm. So, let's say we you know i go to your workshop and i come out and i come out speaking very differently <laughs> and everyone kind of goes what how you know how are you speaking like and they go you know what i'm not hurting anybody by trying to use more compassionate language <laughs> so you know live with it i'm gonna be like this <laughs> It does sound, I, I'm, I'm, I'm loving that because it sounds like it could be a really interesting experiment because each time you, you'll try something out and you might get a response and think, oh dear, they didn't enjoy that. And actually, th that's why I started verbalizing everything rather than just doing it in my head and say, all oh, right, you, did, you didn't enjoy that one? Well, I'm, I'm going to try some, some other things, so watch out, you know. <laughs> I've, yeah. I've got other ideas, you know, until it feels a bit more natural um and what i noticed about the people in, in your family arriving in the picture is just that quality and it's an embodied quality of acceptance yeah of this is how it is yeah and we can be absolutely okay with that <laughs> you know we and, have to right now. <laughs> exactly and so i love that you know because a lot of the way that we manage our lives is as though we can control everything and make it all look great smooth easy whatever and sometimes we can say do you know i can still have that need of ease and calm met <laughs> no matter what chaos is going on <laughs> well can we we shall see <laughs> yeah. okay well i i think i can i really get an essence of what this is about that that Basically, by learning embodied nonviolent communication, we get some kind of toolkit mm. that we can try out in tricky situations mm. in our lives. Mm -hmm. And that this is something that you've really embedded in your life through many workshops and uh, it's kind of become almost like a, a life's work for you, mm. uh, something that you're constantly interested in and learning more about. So mm. there is only so much that can be gleaned from a three hour workshop, mm -hmm. but there can be more gleaned in a three hour workshop than there would be from not going to a workshop at all. Definitely, <laughs> definitely. Oh, and there is a lot of magic in, and you know, there's a lot of goodwill. There's a lot of the enthusiasm to try something new. And really when I look at the world today, 
I kind of ask myself for all the things that I don't like, you know. So notice I'm not saying people who drive me crazy. I'm going to say people whose actions I don't like, yeah. people whose actions I don't enjoy. And there is that thing about, well, OK, so I can't change them. But if enough of us can have feelings of longing for needing aliveness and health and consideration, honesty, and when, you know, it, even just exploring the lovely words and how they feel when we say those things mm. and how they touch us, you know, to to be aware of that and to let that sink into us oh you know and that is what people very often feel which is oh yes you get what i'm saying yeah and i guess it's a much it's much more empowering mm. to know that we don't have to change other people mm -hmm. we only need to change ourselves yeah we can we can do stuff for ourselves mm -hmm. we, don't, we might not be able to influence other yeah. people especially yeah. other people yeah. that you know aren't in our close circle but actually maybe the people closest to us mm. so if if all that we need to know is that if we can embody this mm -hmm. then it could make a difference yeah and that's really empowering that's really empowering absolutely and i am absolutely uh, empowerment is one of my favorite words because for me it's not about power to fix others yeah. or, you know but the power to be me to be fully alive as me, no matter what the situation is. Yeah. And that I'm not, what, what I have the power to do is to not compromise my own values yeah. to make it look nice or to make it seem like it's smooth, but underneath it's chaos. And I guess also if it's, if it's embodied, it means that when situations occur that cause the body to do that, mm -hmm. because, We've, we're learning tools to untangle ourselves mm. um, during those situations. Yeah. Yeah. And that really does bring power because before you can influence others, if you can manage yourself and regulate your own nervous system, your own breathing, your own tensions, and just exactly. be <laughs> present. <laughs> oh. I'll take a breath. And immediately, you know, immediately. Um, yeah, that's just reminded me of a situation where I was talking to someone and I felt I wasn't enjoying the way that person was speaking to me. And it was only when I walked away and I thought, oh, I was joining in that the way that I was kind of meeting them where they were yeah. rather than holding myself where I want to be. Yeah. You yeah. know, I thought I don't need to get sucked into that energy that I'm not enjoying. I can go, hmm can we slow this down a little or I'm just going to pause there or just taking a breath. So I'm obviously not answering in that fast back and forth way, just taking a space. And I thought, ha, I have choice. I can do that for myself. Yeah. Changing the pace of something. That's a real skill. Mm. Yeah. 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 Oh, I'm really excited now. So we've decided Ron and I, that because of the situation that we are in, that sooner rather than later, talking about pace, would be good because we're all in this situation now. So in just a couple of weeks time, on the 4th of May, that isn't a bank holiday and probably wouldn't make any difference whether it was a bank holiday. Um, but on that day, Ron's gonna be with us via Zoom, um, hosted by Finchley Yoga and the Yoga Teachers Forum. And she's going to be sharing a three-hour workshop with us. Uh, it's going to be a workshop that's interactive. So if you want to sit back and watch what NVC is, then maybe read the book or do something different. <laughs> but if you'd like to be part of something that's very much an experience, then do join us. I'm going to give all the details of the workshop in the notes with this. And Ron, would you like to just let people know where else we can find you? Okay, so my own website is called Essence Transformation. So it's www.essencetransformation.co.uk. 
You can also find me as a facilitator on the NVC-UK website. And you will find there, of course, all the other people in the UK that are teaching nonviolent communication. Um, and of course, Facebook. Um, and I have a, my own page. I have um, an Essence Transformation Facebook page as well. Great. So, so we'll be sharing this event on your page, mm -hmm. on my page, mm -hmm. um, out in the universe. <laughs> And um, we look forward to um, those who feel drawn to finding ways to com communicate in a more passionate and embodied way, then this could well be an event for you. Thank you so much for joining me today, Ron. Thank you so much for hearing me, Julia. I've really enjoyed it. Thank you.